Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode. It is beautiful and hot here in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Now by hot, I mean it's a high of 89 today, which is extremely hot for us, but probably not as hot as where many of you are, because I know we're, we've are we been having record temperatures across the United States. Um, but I've changed my schedule and I'm exercising in the morning. So I got to go on a mountain bike ride this morning when it was nice and cool out. And now I'm working in the heat of the day, which is perfect. All right. So this week I want to talk about heavy metals because heavy metals could be causing your sleep problems. And I've I want to talk about this because I've seen this recently in a lot of my clients that their tests are coming back with high levels of mercury and aluminum and lead and arsenic and cadmium and copper, as well as many others. And so I'm just seeing this theme right now where this is really prevalent in a lot of my clients who I'm testing. And these metals are not meant to be in our body. And it's because of the industrial revolution that we're exposed to these metals more now than ever before. And these are toxic. And so they circulate throughout the body. They cause inflammation and stress that is going to lead to illness and aging and genetic defects, none of which we want, right? Now, these metals also accumulate in places like the brain, causing neurological issues such as insomnia, anxiety. Um, they accumulate in the liver, which is going to um, contribute to liver detox issues, which can contribute to you waking up because the liver is most active at night. They can also accumulate in the bone, the kidneys, the heart. So kind of different metals accumulate in different places in the body, but they can definitely lead to this waking up at night. And so let's talk about where these heavy metals are coming from, because they're all coming from different places. So mercury can come from uh, dental fillings that have mercury in them. So if you've got dental fillings a while ago, um, that amalgam fillings, then they have mercury. Um, large fish you're probably aware of, like tuna, are going to have high amounts of mercury. Um, aluminum is another common one I'm seeing, and that can be in tap water. It can be from cooking with aluminum pots, which restaurants tend to do, or aluminum foil. It can be drinking from aluminum cans. And antiperspirant, which is what most conventional deodorants have, also use aluminum. Now, arsenic is another one I see this, it can be in tap water and it's actually really high in brown rice, especially if it's not organic. Um, cadmium comes from marijuana. It tends to be in the soil that marijuana plants are grown in. And then uranium is one I see that I actually had really elevated levels of a while ago because it can be in tap or well water and uranium tends to be in mountainous regions. So I'm in the Rocky Mountains. If you are too, then, um, then you might be exposed to that. And so it's also going to be in root vegetables that are grown in the soil in those climates. And then copper is another one. Now it's not technically a heavy metal because we do need it, but if it, if you have too much of it, it becomes toxic. And so I see, this often in my female clients, but even some of my male clients as well. And so that's because it can come from birth control, um, but also drinking water from copper pipes, from having a vegetarian diet that tends to be low in zinc, and from swimming pools. Chlorinated swimming pools have copper. And these toxic metals are going to cause mood disorders. They can cause insomnia. They can cause hypothyroidism and a bunch of other symptoms. They affect our hormone balance. They actually damage the gut. So it's important to address gut infections as well. And um, H. pylori is a bacteria that I see in 90% of my clients. So I see it highly correlated with sleep. H. pylori actually helps protect the body from heavy metals. So it can be really hard to get rid of an H. pylori infection if you also have heavy metal toxicity. Your body's just going to hold on to that H. pylori. Now it's interesting too, because mineral deficiencies can lead to an increase of heavy metals, 
because heavy metals can do some of the same jobs as minerals. So for example, cadmium can do 20 to 30% of the functions of zinc. So if you're deficient in zinc, then your body might hold on to cadmium so that it can do those necessary functions. But the problem is that cadmium is carcinogenic. It can cause cancer. So you definitely don't want that building up in your body. You want enough zinc to do 100% of its job. Now, I don't recommend any kind of ag aggressive detox or collation therapy for heavy metals. What I do is I focus on balancing the primary minerals first. And so we look at those with the hair tissue mineral analysis that I do for all my clients. And so we really want to balance calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium. Um, usually Almost And almost all my clients, those are out of balance, and that's also contributing to their sleep problems. Um, so we want to work on balancing those first so that the body gets strong enough to release those heavy metals on its own. And then I recommend a supplement to support your body as it gets rid of those heavy metals so they aren't circulating around causing more symptoms that you don't want. And I also want to make sure that you aren't being exposed to heavy metals um, because if, and if, you know, if the, if your levels of heavy metal show up really high on that hair tissue mineral analysis, you're likely are dealing with a current exposure. And if they're lower then it could be from past exposure and your body hasn't been able to get rid of them yet. And so this is just one piece of the puzzle that I look at to uncover why my clients can't sleep. So I run a hair tissue mineral analysis for all of my clients because these heavy metals and the mineral imbalances are so common. Now there are other reasons why you can't sleep, but this is a major one and it's overlooked by almost all other practitioners. Now for my client, Todd, this was one of the main factors for him. He showed really high levels of uranium, mercury, cadmium, and even lower levels of lead and aluminum. So his might've been the worst I've seen as far as heavy metal showing up for him. And um, it came out that he is a frequent marijuana smoker. So that explains the cadmium. Unfortunately, I have nothing against smoking marijuana or people who want to smoke marijuana, but there are health effects to these things. Um, and he had, he was copper toxic too. And it turned out he had been drinking water from copper pipes when he would come to visit his home in Jackson, Wyoming. And he had high uranium as well. So now he also had other issues, right? He had high cortisol at night. He had gut pathogens. Um, and so, you know, heavy metals weren't the only thing, but if we had just worked on hormones and gut health and overlooked this, he likely wouldn't get any better because he really needs some support um, to make sure that he isn't continuing to get exposed to these heavy metals and to help his body you know, detox from those metals. So if you've done other testing and it hasn't solved your sleep problem, this could be the missing test. So again, you can address gut health and hormone balance and everything else. But if you have heavy metal toxicity, you're not likely to get better. And it's going to be really hard to get a, rid of an H. pylori infection like I talked about if you had these high heavy metals. So you are welcome to book a call with me to talk about your sleep how we can find out what's keeping you from sleeping normally, what it looks like to work together, because I want you to sleep better soon.